Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Great is your name, Heavenly Father. It's greatly to be praised. The name above all names, Jesus the Messiah. Oh Lord, how we adore you, how we thank you, how we worship you, how we praise you in the beauty of holiness. Lord, here we are asking for forgiveness of our sins for everything that's not right in your sight. Everyone who has this hope purifies themselves just as you are pure. And so that purification process starts with being holy, set apart. For without holiness, no one shall see you. So we ask you, Lord, that you would continue to lead us down the narrow path that leads unto eternal life. Continue to prune us. Continue to remove every spot, blemish, wrinkle from our wedding garments. Continue to shape and mold us into the image of our soon coming King, the Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to remove all bitterness, hatred, malice, wrath, anger, lasciviousness, filthiness, fornication, lying, cheating, stealing, backbiting, gossip. All the works of the flesh continue to purge us, Lord God, from all unrighteousness. Lord, continue the good work which you've started in us, knowing that your word says you will bring it to completion on the day when you come again. And Lord, we long for your soon appearing in the clouds. We long for your arrival. We long to see you face to face. And so, Lord, may we be ready. May we always watch and pray so that we can be accounted worthy to escape all the things that are about to come on the earth. Help us, Holy Spirit, to abide in you and you abide in us. Fill us to the full with the fresh and the new anointing. Help us, Holy Spirit, to be everything that you called us to be. We thank you, Lord, for choosing us before the foundations of the world to inherit salvation, for it's all your work. And so may we walk in the works that you ordained for us to walk in today. This day, while it's called today, can we be everything that you've called us to be? Ambassadors for you, ministers of reconciliation, lovers of everything, that is good, holy, righteous, and true, which is you. May we love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and may we love our neighbor as ourselves. Help us, Holy Spirit. We give you all the praise in the name above all names, Jesus the Messiah. We pray and ask it all, asking for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Well, thank you for coming back to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Open, Everything Will Change. And this teaching is... So wonderful, so amazing that I just had to share it because my mind was blown once the light bulb went off in my head. Uh, you see, I was in the midst of doing some studying for a couple other teachings that God has put on my heart to do. And in the midst of my studying, I ran across a nugget of truth. And when this nugget of truth came into my uh, mind, uh, you know, everything just manifested, which was, uh, this total revelation of how God has shown us the pre-trib rapture right there in the first chapter of the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 1. And it didn't click until I read this article that I saw in Hebrews for Christians. Um, so let's go through this teaching. I pray that this teaching will be edifying to you because God, I mean, I, I, I mean, really, though, really, really, like, really. The evidence for the pre-tribulation rapture is just so astronomical that, I mean, you, you really, I just don't understand. I really don't understand. I really don't. If you, if you, you see, it's like this. I know in my early walk, I, I too was on the fence about, you know, if there was a pre-trib rapture or if we're going to have to go through the tribulation. I, I struggled with that myself. But that's when I was like a babe in Christ. That's when 
you know, I was still drinking milk, you know, that that's when, uh, you know, I thought that I had some knowledge, but really I was just a babe in Christ, but I was still struggling with this issue, but I didn't have a complete understanding. You see, we have to grow in Christ. You see, we have to grow in Christ by studying diligently his word so that we can understand what thus saith the Lord. You see, once you start to study, hallelujah, once you start to diligently seek him, these doctrines such as the Trinity, uh, uh, the pre-trib rapture, these doctrines which people struggle with, uh, will people won't struggle with them if they truly put their uh, mind, their soul, their heart to a diligent study of what the Bible says. And, you know, the more we study, the more we can see, the more we can understand, the more God will reveal to us when we have a teachable spirit and we're actually seeking to know him more fully. You know, not to be lifted up with pride, but to be fed with the meat of the word, to progress from glory to glory, to continue to understand the complexities and uh, the, the magnificent of the God that we serve, because there's no doubt whatsoever that there will be a pre-tribulation rapture. There's really no doubt the evidence is overwhelming. The, ev the evidence for the pre-tribulation rapture is literally preposterous, okay? God has gone to great lengths to show us that he will rescue his bride, the body of Christ, before he sends any of the end time judgments upon the earth. And the rapture is seen, the pre-tribulation rapture is seen right there in the first book of Revelation chapter one. And I had never seen it until God revealed it to me yesterday. So let's get into this teaching. Okay, I, I had never seen the pre-tribulation rapture in the first book of Revelation. But uh, I made a note, I made an outline, and so we're going to go through this outline, and so I pray that God will minister to you. I pray that uh, he will teach us great and mighty things that we do not know. I pray that we all have teachable spirits, and I pray that the Holy Spirit that dwells in all born-again believers will, will, will confirm his word, because he is the truth, and he leads us and guides us into all truth. So this is his word. And he's the only one who can take the things of Christ and make them real unto us. So I pray that with all assurance, with all faith, knowing that he will answer the prayer if you truly want to know the truth. Okay, but if you want to argue, if you think you know it all, if you, you think you have all the answers, well, you don't have a teachable spirit. You see, we have to have a teachable spirit because he only reveals his truth uh to those who are humble. He, he resists the proud, okay? And when you're lifted up with pride, he can't teach you. But if you're humble, he'll give you grace. Hallelujah. He gives more grace. Hallelujah. And I pray that uh, he will give us more grace to continue to understand the wonderful truths of his word, especially in regards to the pre-tribulation rapture, because it's about to happen real, 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 real soon. So let us start this teaching, and this teaching is based upon Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. And it says, Revelation chapter 1, verse 10 says this, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. And so let's go to this Hebrew for Christians article, because this is when the light bulb went off in regards to Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. So... Uh, here we go. This article was actually about the sign of the Sabbath, and this is an article based upon uh, the Torah reading for this week. And so I was going over some things for the Torah reading this week, and I came across this. And when I came across this article, the whole thing just went off in my mind about how the pre-trib rapture is right there in the first book of, in the first chapter of Revelation. 
So here we go down to this uh, paragraph right here. I'm going to read this. Another verse that is sometimes cited to establish the idea of Sunday worship is Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, where it is written, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. Some teachers will claim that the apostle had his vision on a Sunday, since it says on the Lord's day. The Greek text for this phrase, however, does not suggest a particular day of the week, but rather refers to the great day of the Lord, that is, Yom Adonai, of which the Apostle John was to receive his great vision. And right when I read that, the light bulbs just went off because I had never made that connection how the Lord's day when John was in the spirit was actually, he was seeing when the day of the Lord began. And wow, once that connection was made, God just revealed everything in that first chapter of Revelation. And it truly is a vision of what will happen when the rapture occurs. It's the beginning when God comes, when the day of the Lord begins. And so uh, let me go through this teaching in all 20 verses in Revelation chapter one, so you can see this at, uh, for yourself. And so I pray that God will teach us. So understanding that at this point in Revelation chapter one, verse 10, the day of the Lord begins. And when we understand that the day of the Lord begins in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, it brings light to another level that God is communicating on. And God is showing us the pre-trib rapture right in Revelation chapter 1. And so the pre-trib rapture is actually shown two times in Revelation chapter 1. Uh, the first view he gives... Uh, an overview of the whole entire day of the Lord. And then the second view, it zooms in at the time when the rapture begins, beginning in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. So walk with this teaching, hallelujah, so you can see this as well because God is good. And so we know that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 17, that is uh, the rapture portrayed. And so let's read it. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so we see this event played out in the first eight verses of the book of Revelation. And so let's go through it. This is Revelation chapter one, starting at verse one. The revelation of Jesus Christ, okay? So in regards to 1 Thessalonians chapter four, verses 16 through 17, that's the Lord himself in the red, which God gave unto him. Okay, so uh, which God gave unto Jesus Christ, that's the father giving a shout, okay? Because remember, um, when the Lord himself descends from heaven, he descends with the shout. That shout is the father telling the son to go and get his bride. And then we continue reading Revelation chapter one to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. So here we got the voice of the archangel. Okay. Because in First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 16, it says that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel. And so in Revelation chapter one, verse one, uh, the angel is seen, the voice of the archangel, which is the one who's conduct, conducting this vision to John. Okay, so Revelation chapter one, verse two says this, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches, which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him, which is and which was and which is to come. 
and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So here we have the trump of God. And so the trump of God is in relation to the seven thunders. And the seven thunders is the voice of God. And the seven thunders are speaking to the seven churches. And we're going to get into that revelation once we get to the second view. But just know that the trump of God is the voice of God, which will be the seven thunders, which will thunder when the rapture happens, okay? Because the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so right after the trump of God, which is addressing the seven churches, we have verse seven, Revelation chapter one, verse seven says this, behold, he cometh with clouds. That's the rapture. And that's the beginning, okay? That's when the day of the Lord begins, okay? When Jesus Christ comes with the clouds, that's the rapture, okay? And we continue reading, and every eye shall see him. They also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Okay, so here we see the end because uh, Revelation chapter 22, verse 13 tells us, uh, it says the same verse. Uh, Revelation chapter 22, verse 13 it says this, uh, I pray that, uh, uh, just continue with the teaching because it's going to get uh, better. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 22, verse 13 tells us this, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So here we see God is telling us the end from the beginning. He's given us the whole shebang. He's given us the rapture all the way to the end when he makes the new heavens and the new earth. Okay, right here in the first eight uh verses of Revelation chapter 1. And so now we're going to get to the second view, and that's going to be uh, verses 9 through 20. And so right now, uh, we saw the first view where God has shadowed the pre-tribulation rapture right here in the first eight verses. And so here in the second view, he's going to even give us more. Uh, he's going to give us um, a closer view of the rapture. And we begin in Revelation chapter one, verse nine. And John says this, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So remember, this is a vision, okay? John is being given a vision, which is, the vision of when the day of the Lord begins, okay? Remember, uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 10 uh, says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So John is telling us from Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, that that is when the day of the Lord begins. And he's going to tell us everything that happens when the day of the Lord begins beginning with the pre-tribulation rapture, okay? When the day of the Lord begins, the pre-tribulation rapture is the first event because no harm will come unto the body of Christ, okay? That's why we don't read about any of the judgments falling upon the body of Christ until, well, I mean, we don't read about any judgments falling upon the body of Christ because the body of Christ is not subject unto the wrath of God. We've been given salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, okay? And so from Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, that is when the day of the Lord begins. 
That is when the day of the Lord begins. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10 is when the day of the Lord begins. And right before the day of the Lord begins, John says that he's in tribulation. Revelation chapter 1 verse 9 says, John is our companion in tribulation. Okay, there's tribulation right now. Jesus Christ said that in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for he has overcome the world. Okay, right now we have tribulation. Okay, we live in a fallen world. There's tribulation everywhere. We're all going through something, some worse than others. But there's tribulation for everyone who names the name of Christ. Okay? I don't care how, uh, what part of the world you're in. Yes, some people are dying for the faith around the world. Some people are going through problems in their families, their marriage. Some people are going through financial difficulties. Some people are going through uh, tribulation in their body. Some people are going through all types of tribulation. It's different for each and every individual in the body of Christ, but the bottom line is, is that we are all companions in tribulation with our brother John, who lived all the way back 1900 plus years ago, okay? And so the tribulation that we are in right now is the same tribulation that John the Apostle said that he was our brother and companion in. And so with us understanding that we are in tribulation right now, we can understand what Jesus Christ tells us in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 through 31. And this is what it says here. Matthew 24, starting at verse 29 through 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Okay, don't miss this. Please help us, Holy Spirit. Do not miss this. God is telling us that immediately, 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 meaning in the twinkling of an eye, in a moment, after the tribulation of those days, the days that we are in right now, the days that John, who is our brother, said that he was a companion with us in the tribulation of the days that we are in right now. Jesus told us in Matthew 24, verse 29, that immediately after the tribulation of the days that we are in right now, what will happen? The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew 24, verses 29 through 31 is the rapture. What we just read is the rapture, and it goes hand in hand with what John is telling us in Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. He's in tribulation in Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. This is the point that we are all in right now. We are at Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. We're in the tribulation right now. Not the great tribulation, not the 70th week of Daniel. That's the great tribulation. We are in tribulation right now, okay? But Jesus Christ says that when the tribulation of the days that we are in right now, when it ends, it will end immediately on the day of the Lord, which comes in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And immediately when the tribulation of the days that we are in right now are over, the day of the Lord will begin.
Whenever you read about the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord always tells us that the sun is going to be darkened. The moon is not going to give her light. Okay, why? Because the cloud is passing through. Okay. The stars are going to fall from heaven. That's the powers of wickedness being kicked out of heaven. Okay, the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. That's the great war in heaven. Revelation chapter 12. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, who's coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's King Jesus riding upon the cloud. And then he comes with uh, his angels and the sound of a trumpet. Okay? The sound of the trumpet, the last trump, the seven thunders. And what happens when the seven thunders trumpet? When God speaks, when he thunders on the cloudy day, the elect are gathered from all under the four winds of heaven. The elect, the dead rise first. Then we who are alive and remain are caught up together with them in the clouds. That is why when we read Revelation chapter 1 verse 10, John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I was in the spirit on the day of the Lord. And he heard behind him a great voice as of a trumpet. He's hearing the sound of the great trumpet that is recorded in Matthew 24, verse 29. Okay, when Jesus Christ is coming on the clouds, he's hearing the rapture. He's going to be raptured. He's raptured. But remember, God is showing us a layer of the rapture right here. This is a layer of the rapture. This is like the slow down version of the rapture that we're going to go over right now, the pre-tribulation rapture. And so let's hit these points. So Revelation chapter one, verse 10, John said that he was in the spirit when the day of the Lord began. Okay. So the day of the Lord begins right here in Revelation chapter one, verse 10. It happens immediately after the tribulation is over the days that we are in right now, immediately after the tribulation of the days that we are in right now. Just like the order that we see in Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, John is in tribulation. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10, the day of the Lord begins. Immediately after the tribulation of the days that we are in right now, the day of the Lord begins. Jesus comes on the clouds. The seven thunders speak, which is, the voice of a trumpet. And what is the context of all this? We, we have to be like John. John was in the spirit. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was ready. He represents the wise virgins. He represents those who are ready when the day of the Lord begins. Because those in the spirit, we have oil. And we are ready when this event happens. Okay, that's why John represents the body of Christ, that man child that will be caught up, the dead in Christ, and those who are alive, we're one body. Okay, and the identifying marker of us all is that we are all in the spirit. We all have oil. We are ready when the day of the Lord begins. Let's keep on going. Verse 11, Revelation chapter 1 saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in the book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea. Okay, so here we go with the seven thunders. Okay, so remember, understanding how the day of the Lord is going to play out John is in the spirit, so he's ready. The day of the Lord begins. He hears the trumpet, and the trumpet is coming from uh, the one who is the Alpha and the Omega. It's Jesus Christ. He's the first and the last, and he's speaking the seven thunders first to the seven churches. Okay, that's why the seven thunders, when they thunder, they speak to the seven churches first. Why? Because we can't go off the script. Judgment must begin at the house of the Lord. 
So the seven thunders are first spoken to the seven churches. First Peter chapter four, verse 17 tells us this, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? You see, judgment has to come to the body of Christ first. For those who say that they love Jesus, we're going to be raptured. But for those who only had a confession of faith and no possession of oil, no dwelling of the Holy Spirit inside of them, they weren't in the spirit, well, judgment will come to them on the cloudy day and they will be left behind. That is why in Revelation chapters two and three, we see the seven thunders um, spoken in great detail in regards to the seven churches. And for those who are ready, those who are ready are the ones who have overcome. Those who overcome will be caught up, okay? In each of the seven churches, God admonishes those in the seven churches to overcome. And if you are an overcomer, you will be caught up when the seven thunders speak. Those who have overcome have oil in their lamps. Those who, are over, who have overcome are in the spirit, like John was in the spirit when the day of the Lord began in Revelation chapter one, verse 10. But because God also gives rebukes to the seven churches. There's going to come rebukes upon those who are not in the spirit, who do not have oil. For example, the church of Ephesus, the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter two, that the church of Ephesus, for those who are rebuked when the seven thunders speak, that they have no oil and therefore their candlestick is removed, okay? No oil means you have no light for the candlestick. That means that you can't go up, okay? You can't go up in the rapture. You have no oil. You're left behind. The church of Pergamum, God says that he will fight with the sword that comes out of his mouth to those who have not overcome in the church of Pergamum. Because remember, uh, Jesus Christ uh, says um, that he comes uh, with a sword um, coming out of his mouth. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 16, a further description of uh, the Alpha and the Omega. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So there's a sharp two-edged sword that comes out of his mouth, okay? And God is going to fight with those in the church of Pergamum who have not overcome, and he's going to fight with the sword that comes out of his mouth, which is the word of God, which is the seven thunders, which come to the house of God first, okay? The church of Thyatira, what's he say to that church? He casts that church into great tribulation. Right off the top, the first mention of the great tribulation and being cast into it is to the church. Look at what the Bible says. My goodness. This is what God says, okay? The first mention of being cast into the great tribulation is a rebuke that goes to people who say they know Jesus. Look at the message to the church in Thyatira. Look at what God says. If you do not repent, verse 21, Revelation chapter two, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. The first mention of the great tribulation 
that 70th week of Daniel, the last seven years of this age, the first mention of the great tribulation in the book of Revelation is mentioned in regard to the rebuke of a church. Okay? The first mention of the great tribulation in the book of Revelation is given in regards to a rebuke to a church. Okay? Come on. Come on now. We can't go off script. God says that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? The church of Thyatira is rebuked and they're cast into the great tribulation. Okay. We're talking about the day of the Lord. We're talking about the end of the age. And judgment will begin at the house of God first. It's right there in the Bible. We can't go off script. The seven churches are rebuked first. But if you're ready, you're going to be caught up. If you have oil in your lamp, if you're in the spirit, when the day of the Lord begins, just like John was in the spirit in Revelation chapter one, verse 10, John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. We have to be in the spirit when the day of the Lord begins. And if we're in the spirit, when the day of the Lord begins, we're going to be caught up. We're not going to be rebuked. Likewise, on the other hand, the church of Sardis, they're rebuked. And the God says to the church of Sardis that the day of the Lord comes upon them like a thief. The church of Sardis is rebuked for not watching. The church of Sardis is rebuked in uh, verse 3 of Revelation chapter 3. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore you shall not watch, I will come on you as a thief and you shall not know what hour I will come upon you. Okay, this is God rebuking on the day of the Lord. He's rebuking people who say that they know him first when this all happens because it's going to happen in the twinkling of an eye. It's going to happen immediately for those who are ready. For people like me and you, for those who have oil in our lamps, for those who are filled with the Holy Spirit, we're in the Spirit. And when the day of the Lord happens, we're caught up. We're taken out. No evil befalls us. None of the wrath of God comes upon us. But for those who said that they knew Jesus, for those who played church, for those who faked the folk, but they tried to talk the talk, Huh. Well, on the cloudy day, God is going to find you out. He says, be careful lest your sin find you out. There's going to be a lot of people on the cloudy day who are left behind because they thought that God was a fool. They thought that God would not find them out. They thought that God would never pass judgment upon them. They thought that they would skip into the kingdom of heaven living as a dog. Okay. The Bible says outside of the walls are dogs. Okay. Outside of the walls are dogs. Okay. You can't live like a dog and expect to get into the kingdom of God. It don't work like that. Hey, you, you could come up with all your theology. You could come up with all your mumbo jumbo. <laughs> but on the cloudy day, <laughs> when the one who has eyes 
like a flame of fire. When the one who has feet like burnished brass. When, when the one whose hair is like wool. <laughs> when he comes, oh, all that mumbo jumbo's done. All that mumbo jumbo is done on the cloudy day. Hey, hey, you can, you can, you can, you can jive. Hey, hey, you, you, you can dance and mosey along. You, you can, you can argue with me until you're blue in the face. <laughs> but God says, be not deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. You can't live like a dog and say that you're going to get into the kingdom. It does not work like that. The Bible says we must be born again. The Bible says we must put on Jesus Christ. The Bible says we must be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Okay. There has to be evidence. <laughs> and if you ain't got no evidence on the cloudy day, well, the Bible tells us that judgment will begin at the house of God. And when the seven thunders speak and you're not changed immediately, well, you already know what happened. You'll know what happened. And my prayer, my prayer, oh my goodness, my prayer, if anyone who's listening to this message is left behind on the cloudy day, my prayer is that you will survive the cloudy day. Oh my goodness. Because if you die on the cloudy day, if you're swept away by the hailstorm, if you're swallowed up by the riders on the horses, if you're shaken in the greatest earthquake in human history, if you're devoured by the soul, the pestilence, the famine, if you're swept away on the cloudy day, My goodness, you're lost, no hope. From one fire right into another fire forever. So my prayer is that God will give you mercy if you're left behind and that you would survive the cloudy day so that you would have one last chance to get it right. Okay? But let's keep on going, hallelujah. And so I pray that this teaching is, is, is uh, ministering to you. And so let's keep on going. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 12. So here we see the Trinity. In verse 12, 13, and 14, we see the Trinity. Verse 12 is the Holy Spirit. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Okay, so that's the Holy Spirit. Okay, and we are the oil. And so those who have the oil, those who are filled with the Holy Spirit, what happens? We come uh, to Jesus because the next person that we see is verse 13, Jesus Christ. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with the garment down to his foot, and girt about the paps with the golden girdle. Okay, so... We're filled with the Holy Spirit at first. We're drawn to Jesus Christ. We're meet, we meet the head on the cloudy day. The body meets the head. And the only way that the body meets the head is if we're first filled with the Holy Spirit. Then we see Jesus Christ. And what happens next? After we see Jesus Christ, we see the Father. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Jesus Christ said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. 
John chapter 10, verse 30. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, uh, the same description of the Father is the same description that we just read about in Revelation. Daniel chapter 7, uh, verse 9, we see the Ancient of Days, okay? Uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 9 tells us this. Here comes the Ancient of Days. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. So we see the same description for the ancient of days. He has a garment that's white as snow and his hair of head is like pure wool. In uh, Revelation chapter one, verse 14, uh, with the description of Jesus Christ, it says his head, uh, and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So we have the same order. The Holy Spirit fills all born-again believers. We're caught up, and we see Jesus Christ, and no one comes unto the Father unless we go through the Son. That is why the next person that we see is the Ancient of Days, verse 14. Okay? Verse 15 says this. And his feet like undefined brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So he's coming to judge because a brass is bronze, and brass and bronze always represent judgment. Okay? Just like the brazen altar when the tabernacle was uh, standing, it was uh, bronze. Uh, bronze and brass always represent judgment, and King Jesus, he's coming to judge. Okay, but he's also coming to save those who are ready first. Uh, verse 16, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And so here we see that the seven angels who stand before the throne also come out of heaven. Because remember, this is a vision of when the day of the Lord begins. So no judgment has come um, upon the body of Christ, okay, because the body of Christ, we're being saved right now. We're being caught up. This is a vision of what's going to happen to the body of Christ, okay? That's why no judgment is mentioned, but everything that we read later in the book of Revelation goes into detail about what's going to happen to those who obey not the gospel of God. And to those who obey not the gospel of God, the seven angels play a big part in the end time judgments, okay? Because the seven angels who stand before the throne of God, they come out of heaven on the cloudy day. They have the seven trumpets and they have the seven bowls of wrath. See, in Revelation chapter 8 and Revelation chapter 15, we see the seven angels who stand before the throne and uh, we see them here in Revelation chapter 8, verse 2. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Okay? In Revelation chapter 15, here, here is when they come out. Revelation chapter 15, verse 5. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues. The seven plagues are the seven trumpets, clothed in pure and white linen and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. So the seven angels who stand before God, they not only have the seven trumpets, which are the seven plagues, they also have the seven golden vials full of the wrath of God. Okay, so they come out when the temple in heaven is open. And so because we're reading a vision here in Revelation chapter 1 of what happens when the day of the Lord begins, we see that the seven angels um, have come out and they're in the right hand of King Jesus. And in the right hand of King Jesus is the hiding of his power according to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 4, okay? 
And so verse 17, let's continue to read. We're almost done. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So we see that we have a picture of the dead in Christ rising first. So remember, this is all a vision. This is a vision of what happens on the day of the Lord. This is a vision of what happens when Jesus Christ comes to get us. Hallelujah. And so when John sees him, he falls down at his feet as though he was dead. And so that represents the dead in Christ rising first. Okay? Because the one who comes to get us on the cloudy day, he has the keys to both hell and death. And so, because he's conquered death, he has the power to raise those who have died back to life. Hallelujah. And so, those who have died in Christ will rise first. And then, when we get to Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, when we see the fulfillment of all seven churches um, who are alive and who are ready, uh, when Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 comes, then we get the picture of those who are alive and remain that will go through the open door in heaven. Okay? Um, in Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 it says this. Let me just show you this right quick. Uh, because that's when we're all going to the Father's house together. The dead rise first and then we who are alive and remain, we also go. We get caught up. Uh, Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 says this, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, said, Come up hither, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. So again, um, John is in the Spirit, okay? He's in the Spirit. When the vision begins, Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, which is Yom Adonai, which is the day of the Lord. He was in the Spirit when the vision began. He was ready because it happened immediately after the tribulation of the days that he was in. Okay, just like Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So uh, immediately after the tribulation that we are in right now, the day of the Lord will begin. The day of the Lord will begin. And when the day of the Lord begins, we have to be in the spirit just as John was in the spirit on the Isle of Patmos when he had a vision of the whole event. It's all about the day of the Lord. It's the book of Revelation. When Jesus Christ is revealed, when the veil is peeled back, and the spiritual world is manifested in this physical world. And for those who are ready, we go to the Father's house to be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever. So, Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, the dead rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, we also get caught up. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Okay, so, to end it, Revelation chapter 1, verse 19 says this. Write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which you saw are the seven churches. So, as we see, John is told that the mystery that he is about to see, the mystery that he is about to write about, is the seven stars which are in the right hand of King Jesus when he comes out of heaven. Remember, when he comes out of heaven, he has the seven stars in his hand. When he comes out of heaven, uh, the seven stars are in his hand. Verse 16, Revelation chapter 1. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Okay, so the seven stars are in his right hand. So when he comes out of the temple, 
because this is a vision of when Jesus Christ comes out of the temple. When he comes out of the temple, the seven stars are with him. And the seven stars are the seven angels. And the seven angels are the seven angels who stand before God. And when the temple in heaven is open, as we already read, they come out of the temple because they have the seven trumpets and they also are given the seven bowls of wrath by the four living creatures once they exit the temple. Okay, so, um, and then the seven candlesticks are the seven churches. We are the light of the world. Those who have oil, we give the light. Hallelujah, because who's the light? Jesus Christ is the light, and he sent the comforter. He sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in everyone who has been born again. And the Holy Spirit is the menorah. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us light. That's why when we actually go through the door which is open in heaven at the time of the rapture, what happens when we see the one who's on the throne, when we see the rainbow? What happens uh, when we see the lightnings, the thunderings, and the voices? Instead of the hailstones and the earthquake that comes upon the earth, Instead of seeing that, we see the seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which is the Holy Spirit. Verse 5, Revelation chapter 4. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Okay, so just remember Revelation chapter 11, verse 19, just for one example. For those who are left behind, when the temple in heaven is open, this is what you will see. And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings, voices, thunderings, and an earthquake and great hail. So for those on the earth, if you're left behind, you're not caught up, not only do you see the lightning, the voices, and the thunderings, which are going to be terrible in itself, you're also going to experience the greatest earthquake in human history, and you're going to experience the greatest hailstorm in human history because each hailstone is going to weigh 100 pounds each, okay? But for those who are caught up, for those who go through the open door on the cloudy day, instead of the earthquake and the great hail, which always follow the lightnings, the voices, and the thunderings for those who are on the earth, for those who are caught up into the Father's house, after we see the one who's on the throne from which the lightnings and the thunderings and the voices are coming from, we see the seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Because that is us. We have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been removed. Okay, the Holy Spirit has been taken out of the way, according to Second Thessalonians uh, chapter 2. Okay, the Antichrist has been revealed upon the earth because he who has restrained has been taken out of the way. The light has been removed. The body of Christ has been taken out of the way. The body of Christ has been raptured. There's no longer any more restraint. There's no longer any more light upon the earth. The light has been taken out. Jesus Christ says, I must work the works of God while it is day because the night comes when no one can work. That day is a day of trouble. But Jesus Christ has made a way of escape. From the time of trouble and all you have to do is come to him and call upon him jesus christ says the gates of hell will not prevail because he will build his church upon the rock and he is the rock and he says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church something in the milk ain't clean if you tell me that the church will be overcome the Bible said that the Antichrist will have power to overcome those who are left behind. He does not have power to overcome, to prevail against the church. Because Jesus Christ said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. The preacher rapture is 100%. Repent, repent, repent. Jesus is coming. The Bible says so. The only question is, are you ready? I hope you have oil in your lamps. 
Well, behold, he comes quickly. Maranatha! Amen.